is one of my longtime favorite sleeper breakout candidates. If you follow this channel at all, you know how much I love burst and explosive guys who can get downhill and create advantages. And Sebron is the ultimate case of this. I had him in like the top 20 in his, his class, and he was like he, he was definitely a project. And I think he put stuff together in his first NBA season where he played almost exclusively G League with Birmingham. But he truly has like back the hell off U speed. Like because of his shaky jumper, which we'll get to, teams will kind of back off of him and not really worry too much about the jumper. But he is so fast that he just burns by defenses regardless. Where He's so quick to accelerate, and his long strides. Look at that stride length. Like, that's his front foot. That's his back foot. Like, that is unbelievable stride length, where he can explode past defenders at, like, this area towards the paint, where his burst to win initially is fantastic. But that doesn't come into play as much at this point, given how poor of a shooter he is. But Sebrin is really, really great blowing by guys, getting easy layups, at the rim and even the like the fact that he totally can't dribble is like a obviously it's not great like you can see how loose and high his handle is but he was able to burn guys to the rim all the time anyways so imagine a state where his handle is even like solid where players are backing up they're trying to give him a cushion and he's kind of fumbling around but look at what happens when the handle looks good like in the moments when the handle works, when the handle is working, when you can use it to manipulate and get by guys, like, it, it's just, it's it's really scary. There's not very much that teams can do. <laughs> I love this pass by Dyson. But even without a, like a threat of a jumper attacking off of closeouts, he's so fast that even um, stepping up to him, defenses will show their hand and they'll be screwed even though they aren't like closing out as hard as they would where we see like this defender like kind of tries to slow up but at this point it, it's over Seaburn is past him beautiful euro step he's really crafty around the rim but which which has gives me optimism for his finishing we'll talk about soon but Seaburn again loves to like slow pace euro beautiful hang in the air lefty lefty finish with the offhand Really impressive stuff. Sebrin, though, he is not very strong. And I think that's one of his biggest weaknesses as a slasher and as a finisher, which hopefully can improve. He is a pretty poor finisher. And even though he gets the rim so relentlessly, because of his lack of strength, he struggles to really bump guys off of the ball and to dislodge himself. So even when he puts himself in a good position with his burst or with his handle. And we see he makes both of these because they're highlights. But even from highlights, we can see how difficult this shot is where a rookie, Brandon Pachemski, just walls him off, doesn't give him anything, and he makes a ridiculously tough shot. And Seaburn's finishing is not great. It's definitely one of the weaknesses for sure, um, but the volume is ridiculous. Like, look at this, 250 shots within five feet. That is in insanity. And he was efficient too, again. He scored around 18 a game, very low volume, but good efficiency on threes, which we'll get to. Really efficient too. 61 true shooting is great, but again, we look back at the finishing, the rim numbers, that 58.5% would rank towards the bottom of the league at the rim. But it is not uncommon at all for bursty young players like Ivy and Jalen Green to be poor finishers. This is something that's very common among young athletic guys like Sebrin. So it's definitely far from a lost cause. And this has kind of been where he's at as a finisher. And there definitely has been slight improvements from college as well, where he was just crazy high volume at the rim. Um, and it's remarkable that he's efficient um, with, th with these finishing problems, considering just how much he gets to the rim. But there definitely are process issues, not only with the strength here and improving like play strength and moving guys and hopefully not having to rely on such difficult shots, which he can make, but... No, basically no player is going to have an efficient shot diet at the rim relying on that. But the live dribble passing is definitely not great where he's not going to like make a, make a read on the fly and pass it to an open big. But overall, I would say the passing is quite good for the stage that he's at. He's a great reactive passer, but this is a little, some little patience and manipulation where he holds the defense 
and like pumps a little bit to the corner or at least kind of feigns like he's going to pass here opening up this being patient moving this help defender and finding his man down low it's really really solid stuff good patience good control um not over excited or anything and you can see when the handle is good when he plays with pace as it is for many very fast young ball handlers slowing down is going to be a key development point for Sebrin. but when he does it it looks really good again he has this guy on his back he holds the dropping big with his handle and his eyes and he's able to find his guy wide open on the roll it's really solid stuff Again, we see he's pretty good when he like picks up his dribble. With with a live dribble, as we saw in that first clip, he's not amazing. But when he gets cut off here, he's good at reading the floor, noticing where his cutter is locating. And obviously, that was really bad defense. But regardless, and we have another nice little pick and roll downhill pocket pass like that, which has been really solid to see. And the pacing at times, especially I think there were some nice flashes in Summer League this year, were really solid where he uses the screen, puts this guy in jail, and because he's being patient, he's not just blitzing to the rim. He's waiting for his guy to roll. He's waiting for this big man to have to account for the rolling big, and then once the big evacuates the space, he can explode into the paint with his great length and strides as we talked about and get an easy layup, and I think I accidentally showed this play twice. But regardless, it is, it is, it is a nice play. The jumper is going to be the main thing he's just a very low volume shooter as you can see there's a lot of plays like this where he just gets like a lot of space and defenses back off of him and again um like he makes this shot but i i'm not calling this a good process rep where he doesn't shoot the wide open three he doesn't draw a close out and he hucks up a really bad shot that just ends up going in impressive that he's able to make it but not the kind of thing that we want to see for sure the shot looks okay it's a little clunky where the lower body i don't love the stability here um and it's definitely like a stiffer two motion shot but it definitely looks more fluid than i think it looks in college which is a good sign i suppose but the volume has to increase as i briefly discussed earlier like the volume was, was a big problem he didn't take a lot, a lot of threes in college and that's been the same thing in his NBA time, where if we look at the per 100, he only took three threes per 100. That is like pretty on par with what he did in college. So some progress there would be nice, but the efficiency bump is definitely good. That's definitely good to see. But it's going to be interesting to see if Seaburn can find any playing time this year for the Pelicans. I would imagine he probably doesn't find much because they still have a fairly crowded guard room, but especially if injuries happen or if he plays really, really well in the G League, which I imagine he will again because he played great last year. He could definitely find a role and his nba role would be stuff like this he's so deadly in transition with his speed that push in transition forces a mismatch and look at him punishing this sag off in summer league with a beautiful little snatch back three this is the kind of stuff that he could bring on an nba floor right now assuming the threes can actually go in pushing in transition forcing the defense to scramble and take on matchups they don't want and then helping his team exploit those matchups whether it's through his own shooting or driving or passing but Sebrin is one of my favorite upside guys in the league right now as there aren't a lot of six foot seven players with his level of burst and craft as a finisher and ability to get to the rim and there are still a lot of holes in terms of the handle and the process and getting easier shots and the jumper and the defense is still a little shaky but the fact that Sebrin has all of these technical issues and is still able to be a pretty effective high volume scorer in the G League is really telling to me that once he continues to develop and work on these issues that he could be a real NBA player. And I don't know if he can be a star per se, but I do think that there is a real NBA scorer in there. And I don't know if we see it this season for the Pelicans, but I would imagine whether it's for New Orleans or for some other team that we see it within the next couple years.